Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Good to see all of us this Easter morning. A time we reflect, looking back at what Jesus has accomplished for us on the cross. We cannot thank God enough for the love he has for all of us. For he has declared in his word, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So this love was truly demonstrated on the cross, and uh, the rising from the dead by the Lord Jesus Christ is a full package to deliver you and I. And today we are set free. Can we say amen to that? Yeah. Wish to thank every one of us, the good people of Cathedral, for the wonderful support we continue to receive from all of you. We cannot thank you enough from the depth of our heart. We say we are, in, we are indeed grateful grateful, so grateful for all the support you continue to give to us. As I shared with someone uh, recently, um, as some persons, today is a new month, and that is uh, the month of March, the 21st of March, was actually a day that is very remarkable for our Episcopacy, 21st of March. Because going by the Church of Nigeria regulation, we that are in active service, clergy, bishops, or catechists, church teachers, that is your pastors, we retire at 70 if God continues to give us life, if God continues to give us a vision to pursue and accomplish. At 70, we retire. And I said, Mark 21st is very remarkable because when we became your bishop, it was at the age of 47 I became a bishop. And so when you look at Mark, I mean March 21st, March 21st, that is just past, looking at where we are coming from and looking at where we are going, March 21st happens to be the middle of our episcopacy in worried houses, if God permits. That is to say, at 47, we are to spend 23 years as your bishop. And so March 21st was the very middle, 11 and a half years. 11 and a half years we are spent, March 21st. By implication, we are already into the second half. That's the football team. We are already into the second half of uh, the game. And where am I going? That these years, for our full first half, the cathedral had given us all the support. And we have no doubt in our minds that this support will continue. Uh, I will never forget the message I preached on the day of our enthronement in this cathedral when the pulpit was still somewhere there. And I said then that by the grace of God, we will try all best possible to overwhelm you with our love. That we will do everything to see that it is out of love we will do it. And I want to let you know that we have not changed our minds on that. And all these years, we have seen this love actually radiate from you to us just as we try to give it to you. I will say God bless you all in Jesus' name. 
And we saw this come to light at Manifest 2018 for the wonderful way looking at the team manifest. The cathedral had been always in the forefront, organizing manifest every year. Because actually that dream started from this place. And mobilizing people to actualize it, it was from this same cathedral it started. So we cannot thank you enough. And for putting your feet on the ground and say, you will give all the support we need to see that Manifest City is built. Cannot thank you. Because this is our second half, and that has been something that has been touching my heart. Shall we retire? Half of our episcopacy is gone. We have spent 12 years manifest, and we have just 11 and a half more to go, and nothing has happened. You may not know that my joy knew no bounds. The way Manifest 2018 ended, to see that there is hope at the end. And this has come largely from the support from the cathedral. I say God bless you in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, oh yes, oh yes, hallelujah, he arose, oh yes, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, he arose, the Prince of Peace arose, hallelujah, he arose, oh yes, Oh yes, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Oh yes, oh yes, hallelujah, he arose. Oh yes, oh yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, he arose, the Prince of Peace arose. Hallelujah. He arose, oh yes, oh yes. Father, indeed, this is our confession this moment, and it's a conviction in us. We believe it from the bottom of our hearts that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, rose from the dead. And now he's alive, and now we have hope for our tomorrow. We say thank you. We desire your word to come to us now. Speak expressly, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak on a theme, a topic I have titled, A Deadly Blow Against Sin. A Deadly Blow Against Sin, S-I-N. For those of us who use every day with Jesus, the current edition, that's the March and April 2018, the topic for Tuesday, March 13, is titled Easter Only Once a Year. It's a question. Easter Only Once a Year? Because we are gathered now. After we live here, would we still remember what Jesus Christ did on a day like this? Is it not the storyline we will just follow and we we'll stop there as we have read from John chapter 20 this moment, looking at how it happened? Mary Magdalene going there early in the morning, finding this, the tomb empty, and then finding Jesus to say, I have risen. Is that all? So St. Hughes, just asking, Easter, only once a year? And the last paragraph or the commentary for that day, if you read it, says this. The Christian writer, Ian McPherson, highlights that the first apostle did not so much preach about the resurrection of Christ, but about Christ and the resurrection. He 
it was Christ first then the event second how is it with you he continues is the resurrection of Jesus something you only celebrate once a year or do you daily feel an inner flame as you reflect on the truth that Christ is not just alive but alive in you question upon question in a couple of weeks as I said this was on the 13th of March so it was in a couple of weeks time which has happened now today millions will gather and we are among the millions in churches to join in the celebrations of Easter but sadly many of them will stop at the institutional and never get to the personal they will be more taken up with the event that the reason Jesus who stands behind it all let's ask ourselves do we celebrate Easter every day that's saying we use so if we must celebrate Easter every day I've ended this quotation so if we must celebrate Easter every day we must know it and believe it that Christ by the mighty resurrection as we have prayed this morning from the collects if you look at that collect so my, my theme my message my my text is actually coming from the collects for this morning there were two collects we are taking this morning so if you look at those two collects putting them together you will see that what Jesus did for us by that mighty resurrection we are now empowered to die to sin and be alive in him and in the second collect that's the first one in the second one we see the prayer we said just now from the altar that Jesus Christ has overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life so if the gate of everlasting life has been opened to us, the Easter will not be a one-day event. Because we'll continue to go through that gate, which Jesus calls the narrow gate. Praise the Lord. So it will be a daily thing. A daily thing. So we see both colleagues actually emphasize the fact that by the mighty resurrection of Jesus Christ, a deadly blow that is my theme now has been given to sin therefore we are unable to handle what theologians call daily sin called daily we sin and of course that is true when we look at first john chapter 1 verse 8 which says if we say we, that we have not sinned we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us verse 9 says if we confess our sins is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness well, what is sin actually this deadly blow that jesus by rising from the dead has given to sin what is sin but when you talk of a deadly blow that is to say that thing has been killed what is sin Sin could be defined as actions by which humans rebel against God, miss his purpose for their lives, and surrender to the power of evil rather than to God, and become estranged from God. That is sin. Furthermore, sin is an attitude of rebellion against God. So rebellion was at the root of the problem of Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3 that we read. And has been at the root of humanity's plight ever since. We are talking of corruption, we are talking of terrorism, we are talking of all that in Nigeria today. The very root of it is sin. And it's a plight. So the first time the word sin, S-I-N, appeared in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 and verse 7. That place says, using the New King James Version, it says, so the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? 
if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin. That's it now. That's the first time the word sin is mentioned in the Bible. Sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. But we know that Cain was not able to rule over sin. He killed his brother. That's sin. Rebellion against God. The Greek word for sin is chatter. Chatter. And it means to go wrong. It means to miss a mark. It means to bear blame. That is it. So each time we sin, we have gone wrong. Each time we sin, we have missed a mark. Each time we sin, we bear blame. We are blamed. That's the Greek, chatter. In the same vein, the Hebrew is hamashia. Hamashia. And that hamashia means also missing the mark. Missing the mark. That is even in the continuation. In the continuing verse. I mean a verb. Missing the mark. So it's something you just continue. You keep miss, You can never get it. Right. That is sin. So it is God's plan from time to swallow up death forever. We read that from Isaiah 25 verse 8 just now. To swallow up death forever. We read it from Isaiah 25 verse 8. So when death is swallowed up, actually sin is also swallowed up. And how or why? Of course, when we read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 66, we see it there. That it is because the sting of death is what? Sin. Sting. To sting is always poisonous. So when anything stings, that's poison. It's injected. So actually, the sting of death is sin. So when sin stings us, death follows. And God is telling us in Isaiah that I want to swallow up death. And by application, swallow up sin. Notice that God spoke of swallowing up death in Isaiah 25 verse 8 with the future tense. He said, looking at that verse, he said, he will swallow up death. He will swallow up death. As at that time God was speaking, it had not happened. But the, this is what I want to do. I want to swallow up death. I'm looking at a time when I will swallow up death death. This thing that brings death, which is sin, I want to swallow it up. God was telling us in that place. So, when Christ rose from the dead, this was accomplished. Can you say amen? amen. Hence, we read just now, when we took the epistle from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we looked at verse 17. We read Verse 17. And what does verse 17 say? And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. But because Christ has risen, we are no longer in our sins. That's what the resurrection has done. Deadly blow to sin. Now I want you to see four things about this sin. Why it has to be given a deadly blow. And we begin to examine our lives and see whether this has been given a blow in our lives. Number one, looking at the nature of sin, that Jesus Christ, by his resurrection, had given a deadly blow, is that sin pollutes. Sin pollutes. Pollution. Mark chapter 7, verse 20 to verse 23. Mark chapter 7, verse 20 to verse 23. And he said, that's Jesus said, what comes out of a man defies a man, pollutes a man from inside. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Can you see the pollution we're talking about? It's not the smoke that comes from uh, the refinery there. If you go to my village, you see the pollution. You see all our, all our roofing sheets, those that are not good ones, corroded. Air pollution. 
and all that. So, he says, these are the things, the pollution now. Evil thoughts. It's a pollution. Adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defy a man, pollute a man. These are all pollutions. Has Jesus given a deadly blow to all these in your life? Can you see why this Easter celebration should not just be a one-time event? It should be a celebration all year round. If this has been dealt with in the lives of as many Nigerians who will not have the problems we are going through in Nigeria today. That Nigeria is so corrupt and the government is trying to curtail it. It is not possible for man to handle this matter. It is Jesus. So you and I, we're in the church. If, when, as we understand that this pollution has been given a deadly blow by Jesus Christ. From this church, it will go out to the nation that Nigeria is no longer a corrupt nation. Let them bring the fiercest of men. Bring uh, Idi Amin that is dead and come back. Bring Gaddafi that is dead and come back. Do, that terrorize their city, their countries and so on. Nothing good could come out. That is it. That is pollution. So begin to ask yourself, as I ask myself, all this, all that come out from inside me and I manifest outwardly. Has Jesus Christ given them a deadly blow by his resurrection? Number two, sin partitions. Sin partitions, P-A-R-O-T-I-T-I-O-N-S, to partition, to separate or to divide. Sometimes we partition our stores, we partition our offices so that we can have more rooms. Sin partitions. And what am I talking about? Genesis chapter 3, look at verse 8 to verse 12. Genesis chapter 3, look at verse 8 to verse 12. That is a blow that Jesus again gave by resurrection. But this is still very prevalent in us and around us today. This partitioning. What is the story there? Genesis 3, 8 to 12 says, And they heard, that is Adam and Eve, heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. You can see they hid themselves, partition. They have now been separated from God. Verse 9. So then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? God is looking for so many of us. Looking for so many of us. But we come to the church and we sit. He doesn't see us. We come to all nights. He doesn't see us. We come for the communion. And the bishop gives, and the priest gives the communion. And you think the priest is seeing you, but God is not seeing you. See? Partition. Partition. So where are you? Verse 10. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, see, blame game. The woman you gave me, you gave to me. To be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. We never confess our sin. So any unconfessed sin, there is partitioning. Partitioning. We have divine encounter, and we come. As many of us that come, and we hear testimonies of others, how God is intervening. You come again and again and again and again. Nothing happens. Partitioning. We must take all this to heart. As we set out from here today, ask yourself, 
whether God has given a dirty blow to that that partitions you between him and yourself. Number three, paralysis. Sin paralyzes. Sin pollutes, sin partitions, and sin paralyzes. As I said, there are four. This blow that we have enjoyed on the cross. Sin paralyzes. Romans chapter 7, verse 15. Through, and then we'll go to 17, 18, and 19. Romans chapter 7, verse 15. Sin paralyzes. You know what paralysis is? For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will, I will to do, for what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Have you seen somebody saying, me, this sin, I don't tire. I don't tire. I don't tire. God help me. I don't tire. Brother help me. I don't tire. I don't tire. So it's not coming out of it. Paralysis. You don't understand why what is happening to you is happening. Sin. Verse 17. Say, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Understand it is sin that dwells in you and I. That is why we don't understand sometimes what is happening to us. 18. He said, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. And 19. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Is that not how some of us are struggling? You start with New Year resolution. This is the fourth month now. I have resolved. No more womanizing. First day of the month. First week of the month. Second week of the month. You fall again. You fall again. What you don't want to do, you see yourself doing again. That is a big problem. And the story that is told of a woman. And that is the kind of step you should take. It was just recently she had to open up. During this Lenten period, she had to open up for the pastor and say, Pastor, as you were ministering today, me, I must tell you, say, I don't tire for adultery when they commit. For this church, I don't tire. Pastor said, tell me more. She counted one, two, three men. Two married, one unmarried. In that congregation, that sleep with her. And one of the men happens to be very prominent in that church. That gives support to the church. They see him as a pillar. A partition. Paralyzed. This woman saw she cannot, she couldn't just help herself and she had to cry to the pastor. Pastor, help me. Help us come to her now. Praise the Lord. That is what it takes. Oh. That is what it takes. You must break out. That power, that's the word of God is coming now, is coming with power. As it touches you, it will break that yoke. It will break that chain. It will set you free. I say receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you will not continue. If you continue, your Easter celebration is a once for all thing. And number four, sin. And that's the ultimate. Sin penalizes. Sin penalizes. To penalize. That's the penalty. This is the penalty for the sin. Because we know the football we play, as you foul, it's a penalty. They put it in the 18-yard box. 
and they're free, very free, very free, very free go to score. And it's only the fool that will miss it. It's only the unprepared that will miss it. Go wide for with you like this. Nobody they tackle you. Score now. Out of anxiety sometimes. You can throw the ball. Looking for your bedroom to throw the ball to. And there's the goal post there. So sin penalizes. Romans chapter 6 verse 33. And all of us can say it. Can we quote it now? Romans 6 23 says... For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the penalty, death. Ultimately, sin will lead to death. It may bring physical death immediately. But God may just decide not to bring physical death on you immediately because of your sins. And you know why? That's where God is different from man. And God says, that it's not my will that any should perish, but that they will all turn from their wickedness and live. So you see some that are into fornication and adultery, they will continue. This someone is coming up, you are saying, nah, but you just talk to you. I bet I enjoy myself. It will continue. You see, some that are in courts, as I'm speaking now, in churches, congregations, you hear the someone again and again and again. Courtism is evil. Courtism is sin. You have the penalty of death. Say, now you they talk. I don't know whether I'm still talking to somebody here now. This is the penalty. But you must rejoice on a day like this if you take this message to heart that God, through Jesus Christ, has given a deadly blow to the penalty of a sin. And if you repent, that is all. You are set free. You are set free. And you are truly free. So I have to re refer to say we use again and again but I just need to refer to this one again as the message is coming like this today is only coming on let me recall something again I read also from the current everyday with Jesus by Samuel Hughes and this was on Good Friday he wrote this that was the day before yesterday the edition the current edition Samuel Hughes was recounting an experience. This is what he says. Because many of us will be coming for Holy Communion this morning now. This is what he says. He said, I remember one particular Good Friday. When, I, when a man came to me for the usual communion service and said, I want to enter into the service, but I will not be taking communion. When I asked why, he said, I have allowed other affections to take over my heart and I think it would be hypocritical to pretend that Christ means all to me when he only occupies half my heart. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody now that Jesus Christ is only occupying half your heart. That you are here this morning and nobody forced you to come. You came on your own volition. In fact, it is very clear that Jesus Christ is occupying at least already half your heart. So let's settle the other half who is occupying it now. Same with continues here. I commended him for his honesty and I urged him to take his confession to God, repent of it, and receive God's forgiveness and restoration. The reply he gave was typical of those whose hearts have been distracted by other lovers. See what the man said? When he said, when you say, just surrender this to, her, to God now, just as I'm telling us now. If there's anything, just give it to God now. This is what the man said. I can't seem to do anything about it. Just as somebody may be saying, I can't, I can't seem to do anything about my witchcraft. 
I can't seem to do anything about my, my, my membership of a cult. I can't seem to do anything about, about my fornication and my adultery. It, 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 I, can't see my, I can't see myself do I can't see myself able to do anything about this hatred, bitterness, unforgiving of spirit I have. I can't see myself unable to do anything about it. Why was the man saying this? And if there's any one of us like that here, yeah, this is why. He said, its power over me is too strong. That power of fornication over me is too strong. That form of power of, 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 of fornication and adultery inside me is too strong. That power of being a court member is too strong. That power of backbiting is too strong. That power of a forgiving spirit that is controlling me is too strong. That's what the man said. And you know what Jesus, what Sam Hughes said as a senior pastor, knowing he had to say this about that man. He said, I saw him later in the service. No, rather before then, Jesus Sam Hughes had to give him a word now, and that's the message and the kind of admonition I want to give to you now. When you saw him to say that thing is too strong, that that has taken half my heart, living half for Jesus Christ, too strong for me to, to drive it away. Saint so Will told him, and that's what is coming to us now. He says, You supply the willingness, God will supply the power. Somebody listening to me. That's the power of the resurrection. Just supply the willingness. Just say, just this is just that is your own part. Leave the rest to God. What you have struggled with to come here this morning and you want to go back with you and say it's too strong. Say we use, as he told that man. But we're going to see how it ended with this man. He said, Just supply the willingness and God will supply the power you need to break loose. That's what Sam Williams told him. He said, Later in the service, I saw him take communion. I just pray that something like that will happen to somebody this morning. <laughs> well, resolved in his heart before coming here. I'm not going to partake. I know there are some of us who don't give a damn to that. Who oh, just say, they're going to look me or say, I'm not taking holy communion. I beg. This Jesus, now merciful Jesus, he go forgive me again. Hmm. The Bible warns. What does the Bible warn? It warns. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What is the answer? Forbid. And so see what happened to the man. He said, I take that sentence again. He said, later in the service, I saw him take communion and asked afterwards. And afterwards, I asked him what happened. He said, as you led the meditations on the cross, I simply said, I am willing. I am what? Willing. And that is the kind of thing I want to hear from somebody who is struggling with that sin in his or her life now. Just say, I am willing. And he continues. This man. Say, miraculously, as he said it. Miraculously, as he said, I am willing. Say, miraculously, the chains dropped away from my heart. And my love for the Lord seemed to flame forth once again. That is going to happen to somebody this morning. <laughs> Those chains of fornication and adultery will break forth now. I say break in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's chain of occultism. I say break in the name of Jesus. Amen. That chain of unforgiving spirit. I say break in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's chain of stealing, bribery, corruption. Which is bedeviling Nigeria today. I say break in the name of Jesus. Amen. That is all it takes. I am willing because Jesus has finished it all. He has done it all for us. We are complete in him. Beloved in Christ. This is God's message for us this morning. God has given a deadly blow to sin. By causing his son, Jesus Christ, to rise from the dead. We are to be blamed 
if we don't take advantage of what he has done. Let us rise as we pray. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Hallelujah, he arose. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, he arose. The trees of peace arose. Hallelujah, he arose. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Jesus indeed is alive. Can you say something to him now in prayer? Can you say something to him in prayer? How has he given a deadly blow to sin in your life? At this time, you need to ask. You know yourself, I know myself. Has he given a deadly blow to the sin of pollution? The sin that pollutes? The sin that has separated you, partitions you from God, that you are there, you are even here in this service, he doesn't even see you, he will not hear you. Is it that you are already paralyzed? What you want to do, you see, you are not able to do it. Only to cry later on to say, hey, I don't commit again. I don't commit again. Ah, just say, Lord, I am willing. I am willing. Just supply the power. I am willing. I am supplying my willingness. Supply me the power to break loose. Are you already penalized? And if the trumpet sounds now, if this repentance does not take place, it is hellfire. Just say, Lord, I am willing. Supply the power to break loose. Thank God he has answered you. For in Jesus' name we pray. And so, Lord, your word has gone forth. Thank you for the deadly blow you have given to sin. We pray that this will be appropriated in our lives. That Easter celebration will not be a one-time celebration. But all our years, the 365, 366 days in the year, we will celebrate it. And that sin shall not rule over us. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus Christ's name, we pray. I can see everything.